Dear friends, Namaste. We had seen in part one on the topic spiritual tidbits for a balanced and joyous life that by changing the texture or the ambience of our inner world we can certainly improve our response to the external world. In fact, we have I, the individual, on one side and the world, external world, on the other side. So when this individual I interacts with the external world, there is going to be variety of emotions, variety of ideas, which are generated within. Now is it possible for us to gain control over the kind of reactions or response to the external world? This is the question which we have to deal with. It is found that by conscious efforts we can improve upon the inner ambience. We can improve upon the texture within in such a way that I should be able to maintain my inner balance independent of the circumstances what I face in the world outside. So I have to keep my inner environment, inner ambience clean and fit to deal with quite complex external situations and circumstances. Therefore, we have the subject on one side, on one hand, and the objects of the world on the other side. Now, the people who concentrate on the external objects of the world, they can be categorized as objective scientists. The rishis are the saints who concentrated on this individual I or the self or the inner environment what I mentioned earlier. They could be called as subjective scientists. That means there is a subject on one side, there is an object on the other side. How to deal with the external world by changing the textures of the subject. This is the topic which our rishis or science concentrated upon, therefore they can be rightly called subjective scientists. We also bring in, brought in a term called as self-development. This process of improving the inner environment, improving the inner ambience was also brought under a term called as self-help or the self-development. Now, if you have got to improve this process, when we say self-development, it automatically means that I must know what this self is about. When we say who is this self, we say that this is the self. When I say the self, it is not that simple entity to understand easily. It has multiple layers. It has got physical eye, this mental and intellectual, mental eye and the intellectual eye and the fourth dimension called the spiritual eye. That is physical personalities, personality, mental personality, intellectual personality and the spiritual personality. Majority of us can quickly recognize without any effort the physical self, the physical I. 
when you when somebody asks who did this i say i when i say i basically i mean this physical body and majority of us strive to take care of only this physical being or the physical personality materialistic approach is mainly to focus and cater to the physical needs of the body more gadgets to provide more physical comforts and some more gadgets for entertainment to the mental eye because here the focus is on total identification of this physical eye in fact material scientists are the objective scientists focus is more only on the body therefore they can be rightly called as whoever has got a deeper identification with the physical self we can call them as body worshipers or we can call body pamperers in fact even arithmetically taken when there are four dimensions physical mental intellectual and spiritual if you take care of only the physical needs you are actually taking care of only one fourth of your personality even from the arithmetical sense the paradox in life is while we find variety of food clothing shelter variety of entertainments but we are hardly aware and all these to the meet all these to meet the needs of the physical life we are not even aware of the presence of the intellectual or the mental life let alone spiritual man termed as crown of creation only because of his intellectual ability intellectual capacity to think and evolve higher each one of us crave to know more and more about things and beings in the world it is this appetite which is intense in a scientist who struggles to know in clear terms the scheme of the external world and gain knowledge about it and establish new theories of how they have understood this world domain of objective scientist is therefore only the external world he addresses mostly the physical eye and maybe a bit of mental and intellectual eye whereas the subjective scientist our rishis chose the field of investigation extending the territories of body mind and intellect the field of investigation of an objective scientist is the external world while the field of investigation of subjective scientist is the inner domain the world within the world created by my own mind and intellect within through contemplation the rishis explored this inner world in its depths and reached this depth therefore this approach is more holistic in approach rather than focusing only on one dimension of the personality therefore the subjective came out with very interesting theories and they found in detail the details of body mind and intellect and also they found that the real i is not body is not is not physical self is not mental self is not intellectual self the real i is the spiritual self the small i represents body mind and intellect physical i mental i and intellectual i capital i is the real self or that is soul or the atman atman is the technical in is technical atman is the word in technical parlance of vedanta rishis through their investigation of the inner world codified their conclusions into a systematic science of life and that became the philosophy of life our hindu philosophy and religion provides not only a view of life but also a way of life together it may be called the theory and the practice thus 
the goal or the focus of objective scientists is about the life of objects while that of subjective scientists was life as such through science and technology we may improve the standard of living of the beings but the spirituality spiritual dimension is neglected there the job of the subjective scientist is to improve the very life of people standard of living may be good but standard of life is poor therefore subjective scientist focus is how to improve the quality of life as such rishis took for their analysis all the four layers of the personality that is physical mental intellectual and spiritual they took it together and came out with a technique of integration of all these four layers they discovered that the mind continuously produces cluster of thoughts the contents of which mostly being mundane in nature also rishis evolved a technique of regulating of the production of these thoughts and bringing mind under the control of the intellect that is where the spirituality or spiritualism starts or begins clear prescriptions are elucidated when followed by the individual facilitates him to reach the state of perfect living our mind and intellect as a limited boundary expanding such a boundary is possible and that is termed evolution this is possible through sadhana and this facility of evolution or expansion is possible only to human beings once we transcend the limitations of the or the territories of the mind and intellect we shall enter into a greater plane of perfection also rishi has discovered factors contributing to harmony or disharmony the saints discovered that infinite potentialities and possibilities lie dormant in every human being we have heard of swami vivekananda's famous statement he says every soul is potentially divine the goal is to manifest that divinity by controlling nature internal and external do this by work worship or psychic control or philosophy by any or more of all this and become free this is the whole of religion dogmas rituals temples forms are but secondary this self discovery is accomplished through the technique called meditation the more the mere physical body cannot act unless the life principle presides over it a dead body cannot walk cannot talk cannot think or feel the moment the life principle flows out of the body the, the body falls down and starts decomposing thus the life center in us in each one of us is the sacred spot from which all activities emanate the divine spark of life the spiritual center is called at atman as said earlier and this atman is enveloped by various layers of matter outermost shell being the body now we are hardly aware of this life center in us because our main focus has been so deep has been so deeply identified with only the physical self indeed probably none of us are even remotely conscious of this atman which has got infinite potential within as we go on in our inner journey to dwell to delve deep into our personality layer we will try to know more about atman the very life center or the life principle with this let me conclude the second part of our journey and 
will know more about this in the coming series. Hari Om. Thank you for listening.